Welcome to the Friday edition of HQ brought to you by our friends at Subway. Jeremy St. Louis alongside Amanda Guerra. Amanda, a year ago, Oklahoma and Texas said they were looking to join the SEC. Yes, you say a year ago because it feels like a year ago. It was actually only eight days ago yes. that this news rocked the world of college sports. Mark it on your calendar because it is now official. July 30th, 2021, Oklahoma and Texas will become members of the SEC. It is a colossal move in the world of college football and college sports in general. Both universities founding members of the Big 12. They are now leaving their media rights with the Big 12 that ends in 2025. Of course, one of the biggest questions is, will they actually wait that long to join the SEC? Could it be perhaps sooner? And what now happens to the rest of the Big 12? Let's welcome in the man who has kept us abreast of this entire situation the entire time, college football writer Dennis Dodd. Dennis, there have been a lot of moves in the past eight days. Explain what this one today means. Well, this is the next of a procedural play to get Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC and, and probably the last one on their parts. Texas and Oklahoma today both made their intention known that they intend to leave the Big 12 and join the SEC. They both accepted invitations. The next best, most important question now is when. Chris Del Conte, the AD at Texas, has already tweeted it is the school's intention, remember that word, intention, to join in 2025. That would coincide with the end of the Big 12 media rights contract with Fox and ESPN. But they've always reserved the right. There's that caveat that they've stated throughout this whole process that they've reserved the right. It is our intention right now, they keep saying. I expect a bloody legal fight. I mentioned that earlier this week between the Big 12, the SEC, these two schools to make it as difficult as possible on the Big 12's part to have them go. So I've kind of predicted, you know, maybe 2023. Uh, if you really squint your eyes, you can see 2022. But there's going to be hundreds of millions of dollars changing hands if that happens because both teams right now would owe the Big 12 just an early exit penalty, $80 million each. Now, does ESPN, uh, out of the $150 million they've saved from the Longhorn Network going away, help finance that? No one knows. But for people to think it's going to be 2025, I think, is a little bit short-sighted. I think it's going to be really, really quick. I was about to say, Dennis, though, give us your best guess. I mean, are Oklahoma and Texas and the SEC going into this saying, look, we really think like this is what we're aiming for. If you're those schools, when are you aiming for? Well, I think this goes to ESPN. ESPN wants to get its hands on that inventory as soon as possible because they're not going to pay the, the existing SEC teams anymore. That contract is locked in place till 2032. What helps ESPN, when they get Texas, Oklahoma, it increases subscriptions, uh, it increases advertising, it increases sponsorships, and the sooner they can get more, say, Texas Vanderbilt games than Mississippi State Vanderbilt game, you know, Vanderbilt games, you know what I'm going through here. Uh, the brands they got are two of the top in the country, and that's why they got them. So it's really an ESPN play, uh, and how much they want to fight this. Under the table, I would think, and they don't even have to tell anybody if they finance the legal battle. But after speaking to Big 12 sources this week, this is not going to be quick. It's going to be very bloody, but I do think it's going to be before 2025. Dennis, you were at SEC Media Days when all of this started to drop. I mean, it was just a proverbial bomb dropped in the middle of SEC Days. And as soon as everybody heard it, they were like, well, that's it. There's no more Big 12 after this. Now that you've had about eight days to breathe to see how the situation unfolds, What's the vibe you're getting in regards to what now happens to the Big 12? That's my biggest question right now, Amanda. Who has the leverage here? Does the Big 12 with its eight remaining members or does the American or does the Pac-12 going and get some, you know, some number of those Big 12 teams? You know, you saw a report this week where Bob Bowlesby accused ESPN actually of conspiring with the American to take all eight teams in. I don't know if the American has that juice because right now, still, the Big 12 has that $37 million payday with those eight existing teams that will exist for the next five seasons until that contract runs out. Is that enough for them to pull in some American teams and go to 12 or something like that and create more inventory than they had before? 
or is there security in the American for the Big 12 teams? But for that to happen, for the Big 12 even to exist going forward, all eight teams have to do this together. If even one leaves, I think it's the doomsday scenario that a lot of people around the Big 12 dread that you could just see the conference scatter to the four winds. If somebody goes to the Mountain West, some goes to the American, Big 10, Pac-12 is in play. That's the problem. And they are meeting, I should mention, as we speak, the Big 12 uh, ADs are meeting to, to discuss next steps right now. So that's the Big 12 and the SEC, and we now know Oklahoma, Texas, they are headed to the SEC at some point in the next couple of years. Is In regards to the rest of the conferences, what is their next move that we should expect? Well, I think there's two questions to be asked. Next up is what is the ACC going to do? They are locked in to what most industry insiders say is a bad contract. They signed it long-term, below value, at about $35 million for school sounds like a lot isn't, but soon the ACC will be last among the power five in revenue. There's nothing they can do to get out of that short of Notre Dame joining the conference. We already know that's not going to happen. At least it's not going to happen now. So does the ACC do some kind of partnership with the Big Ten? Did they go crazy and go buy coastal with the Pac-12? There have been no indications of that yet. Or do they just ride it out? Um, you know, these the reason Oklahoma and Texas uh, left, as stated by Oklahoma President Joseph Harris just now, is that the Big 12 is in last place in terms, not in terms of money, but in terms of renewing their contract. They have to wait four more years now to renew that contract. The Big 10 has to wait till 2022 or 23. So they're right in line. The Pac-12 is up in 2024. So that was one of the reasons they didn't want to wait to have to renegotiate. The ACC has to do something dramatic. And then the other name that's out there is USC. It's the best available brand name if you consider Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame aren't going anywhere. I think the Pac-12 and really all of college athletics needs an answer out of USC. Do you go independent? Do you stay with the Pac-12? Do you break off and do something with the Big Ten? All those options are on the table for, the, for USC, and I wouldn't be uh, surprised if any of that happened. But I think we need a, de a declarative statement out of the Trojans pretty soon. With that, with the rest of the conferences, I mean, with as fast as this moved, because this moved very quickly, maybe it was in the works for months behind the scenes, but in the public, it moved incredibly, click, incredibly quickly. With the USC, as you mentioned, with the ACC, all these other conferences, do you think they take their time now in starting to make some of these moves, or do you think they need to see things move quickly? Oh, I think the dominoes are going to start falling quickly. Um, obviously, the Big 12 has to take care of itself. I just mentioned the options there. Whether it even stays together is the first question for the Big 12. Uh, we have found one way to keep American Commissioner Mike Oresco silent. I love the guy. Uh, he's one of the most talkative, available commissioners out there. But he is under a rock somewhere while his conference decides what's it, what it's going to do. Um, I think you should keep an eye on Central Florida. They've had a wandering eye, and they've got a great product to sell. They're in, uh, they're in Florida. They're one of the highest rated enrollments, the biggest enrollments in the country, along with Ohio State and Arizona State. Uh, they think they're bigger than the American. They have, you know, they're looking for Power 5 membership. So it's all on the table right now. Dennis, you have written a mini an article in the past several days on CBSSports.com. One of them, Pac-12 commissioner leading voices suggesting the college football playoff expansion be paused amid the SEC additions. Where does the expansion end up now? It's in limbo right now, Amanda. As soon as the Texas OU story broke, you started hearing rumblings from some of the stakeholders about, well, wait a minute, you know, we're supposed to be going back to our campuses and evaluating reaction to this 12-team playoff, and then the commissioners are supposed to speak to the board of managers who are the presidents of the 10 FBS conferences in Notre Dame in September and get feedback on that. But after Texas OU became evident, it was like, well, wait a minute now. You know, they saw the math and they said, with Texas and Oklahoma, you're looking at the SEC being able to populate six of those 12, or pick a number, you know, certainly higher than anybody else because they've just increased their brand names in that conference. So I have several high-ranking, high-profile sources saying there has to be a pause. They're not saying it has to go away. They're not saying the 12 has to grow to 14 or 16, but there has to be a pause to think about it. I asked several, does this mean that you put a cap on the number of teams from one conference that can get in? 
They said, no, we don't want that because no conference wants that. They don't want to limit themselves. There just has to be a discussion. And, and George Klyavkov, the new Pac-12 commissioner, was the one who said it out loud most. I did talk to Greg Sankey at the SEC last night to ask the key question that a lot of people are thinking about. Was it a conflict of interest that he was manipulating, not manipulating, but working on this playoff expansion at the same time while negotiating with Texas and Oklahoma to come to his conference, thereby on its face giving his conference an advantage in the new playoff? And he said, no, there's a series of checks and balances. But that's one reason why people are saying, slow down. But I wouldn't expect this thing now to be, to go to the next step in, in September. I think it's going to be pushed down further into the fall. Dennis, really quickly, um, Texas and Oklahoma, they are normally on opposite sides of all things in the world of college football. How will these two teams be treated in the Big 12 this upcoming season? Yeah, no one's really mentioned this. Um, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, I think it's there's going to be a lot of rancor. There's going to be a lot of bitterness on the court, uh, on the field. And we're not just talking about football. Remember this. We've got baseball. We've got basketball. We've got the minor sports. And it's not going to be good when these fans of the, the, the existing Big 12 schools see what's happening to them right now, that they may not have a home. And when Texas and Oklahoma come in to play games, it, it, it could get very ugly. Um, there was a situation in 2011 when Nebraska had played its red shirt year, let's put it that way, or their walk year in the Big 12 before they went to the Big 10. And there was an incident at Texas A&M and Bo Pelini there that was very, really quite ugly. Um, so I, I don't think, that's why I say 23, it could be sooner, because you don't want that lingering. You know, the more they play in this conference, the uglier it's going to get. I, I just looked at the schedule, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, November 27th, uh, and what's been Ooh. going on between those two schools. That is going to be a big one. It'll be very interesting. Our right, Dennis Dodd, thank you so much uh, for keeping us updated of this situation throughout the past couple of days there. It has been an intense couple of days, and of course, you can hear the very latest on this move, Texas, Oklahoma, officially going to the SEC on the Cover 3 podcast, your home for all things college football. Make sure to download and follow. Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.